chest diagnostic. Hello everybody, so I'm just making a streaming video today, although I'm not really streaming anywhere. Uh, I guess it's just a, re a recording of a tournament. Um, I will be streaming once I reach a thousand subs on uh, YouTube, and I know I need to sign up for Twitch. I think I have an account. But I'm going to start making more of these videos uh, just for fun and just put them up there. I'm still going to be making uh, just my kind of courses that I enjoy making so much and game analysis. But I want to start uh, making just kind of some Blitz videos here. So these tournaments, it looks like I've played this guy before. <clears throat> so I don't have the highest Blitz rating. Oh, uh, it's a Carol Kahn tournament, I guess. <clears throat> but I always try to just play natural moves. And really the problem I have is losing to weaker players every once in a while. It'll just tank my rating. So let's see how this goes. It looks like there's about uh, 29 minutes left in the tournament, so I'll try to play it out. <clears throat> so what I'm doing here, just developing all my pieces. <clears throat> White's a little underdeveloped, playing a little slow. He's weakening his pawn structure, and I'm perfectly okay with that. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we want to do here. Just put my rook and his queen in line. Now I have check check threat I'll keep my rook there as well <clears throat> he'll probably play alright I guess I can bring my rook in threaten his I really want to keep this knight on a strong square and keep his queen pretty inactive. So it's about equal here, <clears throat> although I definitely have an advantage. Looks like he's trying to put pressure. I feel like I can do something here, but maybe not. I guess I have that pin. I don't know about that move there. All right, I'm gonna move my queen forward, get this knight into play. <clears throat> if he takes with the rook, then let's see. Now I have a couple threats. Taking these weak pawns here with a check. <clears throat> his queen's totally inactive. That's the main weakness in his position. Otherwise, it looks equal. This pawn structure's a little messed up, but otherwise it's good. All right, do I want to let his queen in? Well... Guess I can take these here. Now if he moves his queen, I do get Alright, let's see, he doesn't have that check. I can actually take there if he moves his queen. See my knight is covering that square. <clears throat> I'm with Excuse me. <coughs> I'm winning a bunch of pawns. <clears throat> I 
now that prevents his check and his queen is completely inactive. Just got to be careful not to get checkmated. I can take here and bring my queen. And if he takes a pawn, I can check him. Let's see. All right, I guess I can. <laughs> now I'm way low on time here. Okay. Try to get rid of this knight and keep it together. Guess he can take. All right, let's see if I can finish him off here. Oh, shouldn't pre-move that there. Oh no. <clears throat> All right, now I really got to step it up. All right, can I pre-move these? I think I can. I'm gonna have to race that pawn there. All right, barely won that. See, I, I get in these, <laughs> I get in these Ridiculous positions I shouldn't allow myself. Um, I'm, I'm also talking, so that's part of it, but <clears throat> it still happens when I'm trying to figure out what to do and just thinking. I, I kind of go into these long thought process analysis when you can't really do that in a Blitz game. And actually, when I just play by my intuition, I play a lot better because I'm not overthinking anything, but it's still, I consider it practice. I consider it working on my game if I'm thinking and trying to figure out the truth of a position, even though there really isn't one, I guess you could say. All right, so the Karakhan, normally I like to play the, uh, what do you call it, the Panov Botvinnik attack, where you trade pawns, but I've been <clears throat> liking the, bringing the knight here, I'm not sure what this is called, just maybe the standard line. <clears throat> and actually there was a line that I saw, maybe I'll get a chance to play it later, where you bring the knight here and then to d3. I think that was in a Shapozhnikov game I looked at because I had played him. And it, and he won the game and it was really an incredible line I hadn't seen before. Where he castled queenside and then just started a crazy kingside attack. Maybe he'll take on d3. So I'm playing another 1700 player. Alright, he's checking me. Well, I don't know about that. <clears throat> See, if he takes any of these pieces other than that e6 pawn, then... I think I could take here and then castle. <laughs> this looks a little risky, but these pawns are very weak. And I can play knight to e5 next. My strong knight, weak pawns. It's a good combination. I'm thinking about doing something like John Bartholomew did where he um, he played like 1,100 players. I could do that, I guess, up until 2,000 or 1,800 players. That would be quite interesting. Now, hmm, 
what is that there? Thing I'll threaten that knight. I don't want to trade queens. His position's too weak. I can also play knight to g5. So yeah, 1700 players. Uh, normally they're just very terrible strategically and they make a lot of tactical mistakes. It's really just all about reducing errors. There's really nothing special about it. It's just consistent work. That's what I realized with chess work is I mean, even Magnus Carlsen says he only works like on chess like an hour a day, but he's thinking about chess all the time. Um, but in terms of the work you do, you can just do consistent work, reducing small errors, and it really does add up over time. Of course, I'm not perfect at chess. I still make a lot of mistakes and a lot of blunders, but it always amazes me how each level I've gotten, I'm like, that's it. That's all, that's all it is to, to get here. All right, this will be an interesting sacrifice. So the rook takes. Now, if he takes with this king, I win two pieces. Now, I didn't even calculate that, but I saw it. It's very interesting. Now, he doesn't really have a way to protect it that I see. So that wasn't a very complicated tactic, but it just jumped out at me immediately, so I didn't even think about it and he resigned all right so let's look at that here let's see what mistakes he made he played normal moves developing c3 now I played kind of a discovery except he can develop anyway but it weakened his pawn structure weakened a little more trading down and now I'm totally developed and he's desperate for a trade he should have played something, I don't know, either in the queen back or uh, b6. But he moved his knight back, which allowed me to start a combination. So if his king took, then his knight would have been undefended, so he's forced to take. And he has to move to protect the knight, and now it's pinned, and there's no way. Because, um, so look at, look at all this activity here, or <laughs> no activity, I mean. Rook's sitting on the first square, completely inactive. Queen really has no moves. I guess it could move there or here, but it has no activity. For example, it was here, it could come back and protect the knight. Even then, I'd use another knight to pile on. So very simple game, but these kind of tactics happen all the time. All right, moving on to the next game. <coughs> so hopefully these are uh, giving some tips or explaining. I don't know how good I'm doing. Just leave it in the comments if you enjoy these types of videos. I mean, streaming seems to be popular uh, at all levels. So of course, the, the really strong YouTubers are quite amazing at the Blitz and the Bullet games that they play. Every once in a while I'll have a, a really good game, but mostly it's just mistakes that my opponent makes and I go, okay, well he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so I don't I don't know uh, if that's interesting to watch, but I've seen some YouTubers like Atrophied that have some amazing games. Uh, I think he plays Crazy House most of the time, but those are very enjoyable to watch as well. <laughs> Yeah, now Lee, uh, Lee Chess, Lie Chess, whatever you want to call it. All right, so he's berserking me. <laughs> this will be interesting. I don't really like to berserk. Now, berserking is where you give yourself half the time, but you can get more points. It's definitely an interesting concept. All right, so he's threatening to trap this. Do I want to take I thing? I'll just move it out of the way. Hmm. I think I'll bring this knight down. I 
I'm getting a little cramped here. Let's see. What do I want to do? All right, I think I'll just move it over. All right, so he's threatening to... Oh, he takes up the bishop. All right, let's see. This will be interesting. I guess he can take there, but that'll kind of ply everything open. Yeah, if he took, that could have been some problems. Need to bring... this in here. Alright, so I can... kind of pile on. Position's not the best here. I think I can check him and check. Check and take and let's see here and check. All right, so I checkmated him. That was kind of crazy. I should have won that, but... I mean, he berserked me, and... Yeah, just getting these, uh... Ridiculous positions. I didn't really make any comments there. I was trying to win it, but... All right, so... I don't know what happened there. All right, finally a strong player here. Let's see how I do. Looks like I've beaten him before. Sometimes um, stronger players are actually easier for me to play against because they they play uh, standard moves where these sometimes ridiculous positions I get in. I think that's why a lot of top players um, shy away from opens and stuff because when you're playing openings or positions that you're not totally familiar with, you can actually blunder more. 
that's why uh, like players like Nakamura are uh, in a way creative geniuses because they can play any position I mean not that any top player can't but there's more of a risk in playing players even though they may be weaker they might play a position that they know better than you and it happens all right so what do we want to do here just thinking about checking I'll just bring the bishop back Looks like he's gonna try to ruin my pawn structure. All right. Yeah, you can go. Ru you can you can ruin it. <laughs> it's okay if that's what you're into. At least I'll keep his queen out of f4. He does have a weak pawn himself. Protect that. Let's see here. Attack his queen. Trade rooks. Now I feel okay in this position. His queen's a little out of place. I think if I play here, I'll be okay. bring my queen to e5 or even to e7. A lot of times I lose these uh, games against stronger players in the end where I just blunder or do something completely stupid. Alright, so if I play, I guess here, I could take his pawn if he moves his queen. But then he'd be facing some threats with things like knight to f5. And actually, uh, probably queen to e5 was a better move. So my queen's more active. We've got this position where I have a weakened pawn structure, but he does have a weak pawn, an isolated pawn on d5. I'm just trying to make basic attacking moves in these positions. All right, so he's going for quite a dangerous line there. I took a pawn... Yeah, I think I think this is lost for him. All right, so he just resigned. <laughs> now this is almost twenty two hundred player, which is quite high percentile. Um, <laughs> let's see, I've beaten him before. Uh, all right, so. <laughs> I've been playing pretty well lately, and actually a lot of it has to do with just studying master games. I've really been doing the 20 minutes a day, and I will say the consistency is a huge thing. It's um, slowly but surely getting me back to my peak tactical strength. Now, this is a complex issue, because when you're playing chess, your strength really is your tactical strength, how well you're coordinating your pieces, how well you're looking ahead where the pieces are. But it's mostly understanding. Like for example, in that game where I sacked a rook for a knight, I didn't really even calculate that. I just saw it based on understanding that his king's in the center. He made a move back and you really need to combine your tactical understanding with increasing your positional understanding. So if we look at this position, or this game, I guess I should say, I didn't really make any complicated strategic moves, and he blundered, of course, but chess is a game of errors. Um, I'd like to run this through, let's see a computer analysis to see how accurately I played. Now, I actually do like when I lose a lot of games because it gives me a lot of fuel for the fire to say, because I'm playing games where I made a mistake and it's a bigger incentive to look through every game. Now, the beautiful thing about sites like this, you don't even really need to download a program or buy anything. You can use chessgames.com. Um, I still use books because I think just the process of editing games and reading annotations is very helpful. But Nowadays, you could just play Blitz and analyze every single game, which most people don't do, and that's why they 
stay shitty, they stay 1700 or 15 or how, you know, however low they stay because they don't go through the brutal process of really looking at each game um, and finding where they went wrong. So yeah, I made, I made a middle game error here. You can see I made a move back, a mistake. What did it recommend? So it recommended queen to b3. I did not consider that at all. Just attacking that pawn, unpinning my knight, which was a good formation already. And this is how you analyze. Actually, I want to make a video in the future of specifically how to analyze, because that's a complicated topic. And it's actually hard to figure out uh, how do you analyze to improve because you're using the same thought process. If you don't want to pay for a coach or you don't um, want to get some outside assistance, really you should you could just use a computer. So at this point, he ruined my pawn structure, but the middle game to end game transition he didn't handle so well so what was his idea here and what was my idea why did I end up with a better position so he's making some basic but really pointless threats and you'll see that at all levels but especially at my level uh, players don't make some uh, so many egregious tactical errors but they do make basic threats that they think the opponent won't meet but are actually really easy to meet and he just took he could have uh, tried to maintain tension playing rook to d8 but now his queen yeah it's pinning this knight but it's not really doing anything he really wants to bring this knight in play something like knight to f4 I just played h4 to block that so because he was threatening uh, h4 himself on my pin knight. So it went from 0 to plus 1.8. Queen to e7. And now he removes his queen from the king side, letting me take a pawn, trying to gobble up material, but at this point it's my queen and knight against his knight and king. And it says mate and six, so... Uh, ba just basically a tactical error, but this is kind of a complicated tactical error because it's not a it's not a motif, it's just it's just activity. That's all tactics is. So really, the only move was knight to e8. It's like it's queen to h5, and it's just all checks here. Uh, even suggesting knight to e7. <laughs> giving away his queen g5 and then the final mate alright so let's see if I can get one more game here um, they might close the tournament pairings so yeah definitely the 20 minutes a day is working for me um, I was studying an hour or two alright so here we get a game versus Pepo, <laughs> Pepo 101. All right, so this, maybe I'll be able to show you this line. Here we go, knight to c5. If, actually, if he takes, I can play knight to d3. This will be quite interesting. So see, he can threaten Knight to f2, but actually with knight to d3, that solves all my problems. He gave me a pawn. All right. <coughs> Is there any way I can keep this pawn? He'll have to give me his bishop for it. I'm trying to figure out if it's possible. No, I'll just play knight there, and then I'll castle. All right.
right, so at this point, we've traded queens. We're just kind of went to an end game. He's figuring out if he wants to take that pawn. But I think I'll still have a slight advantage, be a little more developed. Nothing major. Next move, maybe bishop to f4. All right, now actually I could bring my rook in and I think I win that piece because I can play f4 next move. So I don't... Players are just blundering all over. Let's see if I can finish this game off because now I've just won material. I might be able to... All right, so just a little bit complicated in terms of getting this out. I might just take that. I can check. Check. And then keep my bishops and my pieces. So I've won a piece but it's a little complicated. Although I think I'm doing okay. Just need to keep it together. I get in positions like this a lot. Actually, I, actually it's quite rare that I'm outplayed totally in games like this. Um, normally my issue is just <laughs> keeping it together. All right. <laughs> a piece for a pawn. All right, let's see here. All right, trying to keep it together here, folks. Keep it together. He's going to get his, his piece there. All right, so it looks like we might be trading down. We might end up with a lot less material if he takes. All right, let's see. Now I'm threatening a check. We'll trade down. Do I want to take here? I think I'll take there. Move. Just got to move fast now. Son of a bitch. Looks like he's going to take all my pawns. Ah! Ah! I won! <laughs> ah! Wow. Okay, so 
<laughs> I did mess up there, but I won again. <laughs> All right, so I don't know how I did in this tournament. Let's see. All right, I came in late, came in halfway, but I managed to win every game. And let's see, my overall performance, pretty good, 23-25. Okay, so this was a crazy uh, recording. There was kind of some moments that were pretty tense, just trying to figure it out. Um, that last game made a lot of mistakes. I just, I'll go over it real quick. Oh, no, I'm not playing another one. So I've been trying to get my rating to 2200 that seems to be a level of most of the national masters although there were quite a few that i saw all right they changed this whole thing around so i basically gave away all material in the material in the end there and had a losing position that's what i like about this site though is you can do request computer analysis although you should go through it first so the opening i played that line i was talking about where um, which actually seems to be quite strong, has good results. He basically ended up with the losing position right away, losing a piece, almost plus three for me. All right, so I should have just... Well, it's saying knight to g5, that was, that's a good idea. So again, tactics, uh, activity... So what is your least active piece here? Either the rook on A or the knight. So that makes logical sense. Although I don't think I'd find that in the blitz game. That's a great way to activate your knight. So I played strongest moves here. Kept my advantage. Just trying to find where my advantage dissipated. All right, so it's when I tried to complicate things, I should have just traded, rook takes, and then actually, let's say he would have taken here. Oh, that would just gives away a rook, duh. So we just get kind of a central struggle there. I like this position a lot better than what I got. Let's see where I went wrong. So rook takes, still had an advantage. All right, knight to f2. Good move. All right, so that makes sense. Then he would have played f5, and his pawn, his pawn structure would have been weakened. So I should have kept my rook is what it's saying. Again, end games. End games are hugely important at at this level of blitz and even just standard games. And I've been working on my end games. But apparently they need more work. All right, so I was much less accurate than this player. You can see I had a big advantage until it starts slipping. Just slip, 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 slip. Mm. Yeah, this is a very difficult ending at this point to play. Uh, I should have played knight to e3, keeping the opposition. Don't allow your king to come in and take all your pawns. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this stream. Uh, some crazy games and interesting positions. If you like this style of video, leave me a comment. I know it's a little longer, but... Some people seem to enjoy the stream, the kind of live games that I'm playing or others are playing, and the commentary. Uh, some positions that I didn't give commentary because I was trying to win in the end with a couple seconds. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.